Our brother Frank Tertus. Thank you very much, Pastor. <clears throat> I never dream in my life, never once, <laughs> that I'll be standing in front of you uh, to share the word of God. And to him, in his hand, the place all, everything in my life. For him to use me, to be able to share the message that we, he has for us today. Uh, the message that I'm going to share with you this afternoon is coming from the book of Daniel, verses 3. And the title of the message is The Image of Gold in the Fiery Furnace. <clears throat> Probably a lot of you have heard or listened to this story, one of the greatest events in history of the Bible, where faith is tested to the maximum. It's about, the story is about the three friends, <clears throat> friend of Daniel, and they are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The testing of their faith. But we will use the story as a base for us today, uh, this afternoon for the message. Actually, the message revolves around this story. And what I'm going to do is have this story relate to our lifetime today. Let me start by asking a question to all of you, to all of us, me and all of you included. What is your normal day? How do you, you know, go about your normal day? What does your normal day look like? Perhaps it begins with uh, preparing to go to work, waking up early, shower, breakfast, ready to take our car and go to our work. Or maybe keeping the house, tending to the needs of the children. But we don't know. Suddenly, a message came. We received a message telling us that you receive a message that you are in violation of a new law forbidding worship of God. And the penalty is death. How would you react with that kind of message? You are you wake up in the morning ready to go to <coughs> work, school, or you know, tending to our families throughout this day, and then suddenly you got this message. How would you react? Probably shock. Or probably you know, go to the mountain hide. Or probably not exercising the faith or the belief that we have about God. <clears throat> if you look at the book of Daniel, especially Daniel, his normal day, his normal day is like this. You know, he prays three, three times a day, and he go about the work of the Lord every day, and he is never surprised of anything, just like the news that I just said. How would we really feel about it if you are in that situation? That is what we are going to discuss today and share it to you, can we show it in the screen the decree by <coughs> King Nicobod Nassar. Oh, pardon my, my pronunciation. <laughs> it's sometimes it's tongue twisted. <laughs> yeah, from, we'll start with the chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. That is the decree that was given by the king. 
to all the people, to all the nation. It says, Then the herald loudly proclaimed, This is what you are commanded to do. All peoples, nations, and men of every language, as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, cithar, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold, the, the king Nebuchadnezzar has set up. That is the decree. What if we are living in those times? What are we going to do? Where will be our faith? Where will be our belief in God at that time? Today, in our lifetime today, we don't have this kind of threat to stop worshiping God. Worshiping God. You know, we've never been tested like the test that has been given to the three friends. And then, let's go to Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 to 12. And this is the accusation now in the story. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. Which are the Jews? The Jews are the three friends. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O King, live forever. You have issued a decree, O King, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, cithar, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship <coughs> will be thrown into the blazing into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have sent over the affairs of, your, of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. <coughs> they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. What an accusation. What if all of us is in that situation? What will we do? Shall we deny our faith? Shall we agree to worship the image of gold because the king commanded it? <coughs> and what is the response of the tree? Now we go to Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18. It says, Sedra, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves <coughs> before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O King. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O King, that, that we will serve, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. <coughs> Is that the last one? Do we have the courage to say the same thing to the king when we are or our faith is being tested to the maximum because we're talking about death here. If we don't do it, the punishment is death. And let's go to the punishment. Daniel 3, 19 to 23. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Sedrach, Meshach, Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times, hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the blazing furnace. So this man, wearing the robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent 